Hey everybody, what's going on? You're watching Eric C. The Art of Noise. Well, right now, The Art of Making Noise. Alright, welcome back. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great, and I am working on the Sterling, the Music Man, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to locate any high spots and low spots. So what I got going on over here, I feel it by hand, and I can kind of feel that there is a little bit of a high spot over here. If I take my straight edge, and I can verify that that is, yes, a high spot. And this kind of feels a little bit on the high spot too. Yep, yep, a little bit. Nope. Nope. So what happens when you do the epoxy resin? If it, you're doing a large tabletop and you're using the epoxy resin that's for countertops and tabletops, um, if you have a large area and you have no cutouts that you have to mask up, it'll pour and self-level really nicely. Around the edges is a little bit thinner because it has to fold over if you do a fold over around the edges like I do with the guitars. So it's going to be a little bit thinner around these edges, which that I don't mind, but this top I want to make sure is nice and flat. So what I need to do is I need to go over and kind of level sand it with 220 grit sandpaper on the palm sander. When you have to uh, mask off around stuff like I did with the pickups, the tremolo, and then I masked off around the neck pocket over here, it, it makes like a void a little bit. and. The epoxy resin kind of like builds up more in that void than it does around the edges. So, and then you have like high spots that end up going around the tape that kind of like the tape, um, I don't know how to explain this, <coughs> but I tried everything that I could figure out to stop this from happening, but it still happens. For some reason, the tape is like a magnet and it kind of wants the epoxy to butt up against it but kind of rise up the uh, tape a little bit and I don't know why it happens but it does so I need to correct that so what I have to do is I have to scrape the edges after removing the tape and that still leaves you a little bit of a high spot around the edges because I do the uh, the tape with the, um, or the razor blade with the tape on it and uh, so that doesn't ride the body with the razor blade the tape help protects it but it still is a little bit of a high spot, so I still have to go over and sand it anyways. So what I got going on with this thing right now is just that. I'm going over, so I can kind of feel that there's a high spot here, so I need to take care of that. The back is pretty much, pretty much complete as far as the sanding goes. Now, <coughs> excuse me. What I'm going to end up doing with this now is after I get done doing all the sanding, I'm not going to make any more uh, masking of like around the pickups area or around any of the cavities that are cut out over here. Only part that is going to get taped up is the part that is over here where the neck cavity is. Reason being is because when I do my shielding, like I got shielding paint inside of here, I got shielding paint inside of here, and what I'm going to do is when I go and do my last pour of epoxy, some of the epoxy is going to go in here and coat that. So I took my router and I kind of routed this down just a very, very little bit, um, probably like a sixteenth of an inch, just to give me that sixteenth of an inch more when I put that epoxy inside here. It sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. And I may not even get that much epoxy inside there, just enough to coat it. Same thing with the control cavity, it's going to have the same thing, it's going to have a little bit of a coating inside of there as well. Now instead of running a wire from each cavity, what I end up doing is I take the shielding paint and I kind of paint inside of the hole, and I, I mean it's pretty easy to do, not that hard. I got some small, real small paint brushes I can get inside there with, they're kind of like a um, you can even use a Q-tip if you wanted to, but these are kind of like a Q-tip. Instead of being a paintbrush on the other side, they have like a little bit of a, um, I don't know what you would call it, like a little bit of a felt tip to them. And they're perfect for going inside there. So instead of having a wire that another wire that's in the way, it kind of like makes this pretty easy and it still makes a connection. 
Coating it with the epoxy resin just seals it up from getting damaged, scraped, or anything else. Now what I'm going to do here is the same thing with the pickup cavities. Now, if you remember, right over here was a big, big hole, all right? And it was about like a half inch size. Well, I ended up putting a piece of dowel rod inside there. And on this side, if you can see it or not, I reformed that nub that was over here because this is where the other whole side of the hole was. So I reformed this nub, and now all I gotta do is kinda sand it down a little bit and smooth it out, and then paint it with the uh, shielding tape, or paint. And what I'm gonna do is after I get all my sanding done, I'm gonna go over everything and make sure that everything has got the shielding paint on it that it's supposed to, and this dust kind of like coats the shielding paint um, after it dries and kind of makes like a like a powdery mess. So as you can see here, I routed out a little bit of the pickup cavities. They are no longer black anymore. Did the same thing like I did with the tremolo spring area. Routed it out about a sixteenth of an inch and uh, that gives me a little bit of room for replacement of the wood and the paint that was already in there with epoxy. Now, if you've seen in my last videos, these holes were not there. They were covered up with the uh, veneer. So what I ended up doing is I took a, before I started doing any of my sanding or coating of the body or anything else, what I did was I took a small pen and I punctured the area. You can kind of feel the indentation with it with your finger. Punctured the area with a pen, so that leaves me with a small hole that I can physically see. Now, as far as being center with the hole that when I punctured it with the pin, that is a different story. So what I ended up doing is after I got my um, uh, everything sanded and stuff, I took a black Sharpie marker and right on top of those pins, and I put a little black dot. So my router, actually my Dremel, has got a bit on there that has a rounded, I don't know if you can see that or not, has a little bit of a tapered on the sides. And this part over here is supposed to act like a bearing. So I drilled a small hole where that pin was, stuck the tip of the uh, Dremel bit inside that hole, and that gave me a way to cut out these holes without having to like hunt them down and, and make a complete mess at the top of the body. Now there is a little bit of a chip spot on there that I can correct. Like I said, this is going to get another coat of epoxy resin, which would be the last coat. That's why I'm doing all this level sanding on here to make sure that this is all nice and flat before I put that coat on there and have it to where it should be okay when the final outcome comes. Now on the sides, you can see this line that's going across here. That is my seam line between the two epoxy resins. Now I overlap. So that line is, it is pretty much flush with the other side over here. And it can probably go down a little bit, so I'm gonna end up sanding it down a little bit more to get rid of that line to where it's not so presentable. See, like over here, I was able to sand it out more, so it's pretty much even. That's what I'm gonna do all the way around. By the time you get done sanding all this down, that line will be completely invisible. And I could, if I really wanted to, go to the next stages of uh, sandpaper and polish this up but I do see a couple of little specks inside of here from basically just the air bubbles the tiny little bubbles I hate that you can't see them when the surface is uh, coated you know after your pour and the torch is supposed to basically remove all those bubbles but sometimes some of them get trapped close to the body more than the top of the epoxy which makes it a little bit more difficult to get out and I thought I got all of them out but there was a couple of them that were around this area over here. So I'm going to end up doing another pour on this. Like I said, the back of it had a thin, has a thin coating on it. And you can see like the body and everything else is not like over, you know, chunky and stuff like that. As far as that goes. So I'm trying to keep this lightweight and still have, you know, a nice finish on there. So yeah, I need to get this finished with this and get back to, uh, Back to getting getting this thing basically set up for in a po another epoxy and finish up so I can go and start the headstock work on the uh, neck. <laughs>
All right, I like that. That looks like it's going to work out fine. Now what I want to do is work on these edges, get rid of this line over here. So now basically all the sanding is done. I don't have to do anything else with that. Put everything away as far as sanding material go. I still have to clean up a little bit over here, get all this dust up. But there's a couple more things I need to take care of before I start doing a pour on here. And one of them is I need to use the Dremel to get rid of these really sharp edges. I mean, these edges are pretty damn sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my glasses on. Set my Dremel up over here. Now I have a bit that's gonna be tapering the edges around here. So I'm gonna make sure that I have the bit where I want it to be. And it's not gonna to cut too much off into the wood. Just want to knock down that edge. That's all I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Sunday morning weather. Wow, it actually snowed last night. Still snowing now. Surprised. Didn't think we were going to see any more snow here in Illinois. So, got my coffee. And I'm about to get started working on somebody's guitar. Let's get to it. Alright, so I was looking at this thing. Shielding paint has ended up drying, so I don't have to worry about that. I was looking at this part right over here and you can see it doesn't match the other sides a little bit more on an angle. So what I'm going to have to do is take my template, even though the template is not the exact size, I can still trim out what I need in this corner to give it the shape that I'm looking for to match the other side. I don't know if maybe when I put the top on here that some glue kind of seeped in over here. It doesn't feel like it. But uh, yeah, I gotta fix that. I don't like the way it looks. All right, so I need some double face tape. Pick this stuff up off of eBay. It's pretty damn good. And make sure this side is clean. That's the side I want to glue. The glasses. Find the end of this. Don't need very much of it, but it goes a long way. Just enough to stick it in place. The only bad thing about it is peeling off the backing. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. That wasn't so good. So let's see here. Now I'm going to line this up with the curve of the original without cutting more meat than we need to. Right there. Make sure this side is lined up with the other side. Pressure and go nowhere. Change out my bit on uh, my router. Oh, I love this router. This router is 
like really really nice master force get it at Menards it's fully adjustable the only thing I wish it did was come with two of these flat wrenches because it's got a lock here like a Dremel does. You push in the lock and then you go ahead and tighten or loosen your bit. The only problem with this is, is that one of these days this lock is going to start to fail because of the, how tight you have to make how tight you have to make the bit and the chuck. So longer so I got two of these router bits they're really really small and they also have a small bearing on them so they'll be able to ride the edge of the template and I can cut out that corner really nice so it fits in the chuck like so tighten this up make sure it's in there Make sure these things are in there really tight because they can, if you don't tighten them up enough, they will vibrate loose. Alright, so go ahead and put my shield back on. This is fully adjustable for depth. So I'm going to see how far I need to be inside that hole. In order to ride the bearing and cut what I need to cut. So let me take the shield off so I can see. I can't see very well with that little bearing. A bearing bit, side screw, and this thing should snap right off. I guess that should snap right off. Okay, well, now I can see inside there where this is going. So I am writing, I am writing the template, but I want to write it right on the edge of it without cutting into the bottom. I don't have to remove much, I just have to cut it enough to where I just have to cut it enough to where I get that shape. Of the bearing. Oh, there you go. Now all I gotta do is paint, recoat it. This side too needs a little bit of help. So now I gotta hit that edge a little bit with the Dremel to round it off.
All right, so now they match better. Go ahead and with the shielding tape after our paint. Now I'm not worried about getting a little bit of this shielding paint on the body because I do have to sand this top down a little bit with a different grit paper. everything. That looks pretty good. A couple of spots I see I missed when I did it the first time. I just put another coat inside here and call it good. All right, so I'm pretty much ready to start putting the final coat of epoxy resin on this thing. Think of what's already on here as what you would call a seal coat, okay? The wood is sealed, there's no exposed wood. You shouldn't have really too many um, bubbles or any bubbles at all that are coming out of the wood from just starting off a new pour of epoxy resin over raw wood. So right now it's just a tune-up. I got work a little bit on this so what I want to do with that is take a piece of dry sandpaper and just kind of like smooth out a little bit of what's going on with this hump that I had to build up over here to fix the chewed up wood and I just want to smooth it out because it already has the shape so I don't have to shape nothing I just want to smooth it because again, this is going to have epoxy resin inside of all the pockets, all the chambers, all the cavities. And I just want to make sure that this is going to be nice and smooth as well. So it has that look of just being painted. Yeah, that's that black is from the uh, shielding paint that's inside there. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Now I can go a couple ways with knocking this down. I can either sand it or use the Dremel. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Dremel tool for doing this. Now all I have to do is skim this down just to be flat and level, which I will use, I'll use this right here, a little bit of a stone. So where are my pliers? I need my pliers to remove the bit that's already on here. one on here as well. I'm not too sure of how high it's got to be or how low it's got to be in order to fit the way I want it to fit. Tighten it up. I used to have a wrench for doing this for the Dremel but I can't find it. So I'm going to turn this on its side. Make sure that this bottom plate is nice and clean. There's no dust or burrs on it. So let's see. I need to drop this down a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Right there, and again, I don't want to cut into the wood. 
I just want to trim off this high spot right here. So we'll go ahead and do that. That's done. Oh, I got right on top of it, so I'm just gonna sand it back just a little bit. That's nice and even, y'all. So. Here you go. That spot is repaired and fixed and there should be no problems with it whatsoever. Now give me a nice little mount for the uh, back plate when I make that too. So the last thing to do with that is put some shielding paint in that area. I want to clean off around the edges over here. damp paper towel just go around the edges get the sanding material the white powder out of the cracks so I don't lock that in there when I put the uh, resin on there so I got my shielding paint and a small brush bought this kit that's got a bunch of these paint brushes inside of it and it seems like some of them are large and some of them are small. I don't really need the large ones, I just need the small ones. Let's okay, so cover this. Get that to blend in really good. Alright. Let that dry. Let that dry up and uh, I didn't even notice that it was a chunk missing out of there. So what I need to do next is to, I do have to do a polish sanding on the back of this, which is not really a polishing sand. It's a pad that I used that is, um, it's roughly around 400 grit sandpaper. So it'll kind of smooth this out a little bit more with uh, removing the 220 grit sanding uh, scratches out of this. And that's kind of what I want. I like 400 grit sandpaper, um, especially with wet sanding, it works out really nice. But that'll smooth out and get rid of all these deep scratches. I don't want any of these scratches from the 220 to show up through the epoxy resin. And you'll even though it's still sandpaper, 
uh, and you are putting a coating on top of that, sometimes you can still see your scratch, uh, scratches through the epoxy resin. You, you see what's already embedded into the wood, and I don't want that. So like I said, you know, just think of what's already on here as a seal coat. And once I cover that this last time, this will be done. And then I can finish up working on the neck. So I've got the neck, and then I got the headstock to match the body, which I am getting a logo to put back on here. And uh, now how I did this, this is kind of interesting. How I did this was, is because there is a bend over here, and I'm not going to be able to get the epoxy to stay up here the way it would stay on a flat surface. It's going to want to follow gravity. So what I ended up doing is I notched out the black with a, a file, a straight file, and then butted the uh, veneer all the way up against that straight file. Since this is black, and the way I have it fogged in is black around the edges, it should match up pretty good. Uh, I do have to fill in the, uh, there's a little bit of a gap here, I do have to fill that in. Not that big of a deal. Back of the neck, it has got a nice gloss finish to it, and I didn't want to interrupt that as far as doing the sanding and other work to it. So this is going to be pretty much ready to do what I need to do with my next steps. And uh, yeah, so getting it done. Actually, don't look too bad as a matte finish either. 